Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. So we've talked a little bit on the show about the Green Party, a lot of infighting, Howie Hawkins got the nomination. A lot of people within the Green Party didn't like that. We've talked a lot about Jesse Ventura running. They were trying to get him to get drafted, uh, the Green Party to nominate him, then Movement for a People's Party has had it. He said, I'm not going to run, but the Draft Jesse movement at draftjesse.com, they're still fighting as well they should. Maybe Jesse will change his mind. I don't know. But it at least speaks to the fact that we're looking for somebody like that to be a true leader. So what is interesting, and I and I didn't want to spend a lot of time talking about the infighting of the Green Party because they're this small little party and the infighting is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So it's either private intelligence has probably infiltrated that party and are trying to deliberately divide it because of the power that they had in 2016. What Jill Stein did in 2016 was very powerful. She got over a million votes. And of course, the Hillary people were like, she helped Trump win. No, she didn't. The libertarian candidate got 7 million votes. So the libertarians took more votes away from Trump. And that notion that taking votes away, a lot of people vote green. Not everyone that votes green did it because they were going to vote Democrat and said no. They were like, I'm never voting Democrat. I only was going to vote. I don't vote Democrat. I only was going to vote for Bernie Sanders. So the Democrats weren't going to get my vote. So, but what's significant here is what just happened in Alaska. Green Party of Alaska rejects national candidate, nominates Jesse Ventura. This happened September 1st. So they're going to put on the ballot, the presidential ballot in the state of Alaska, because we've talked about the draft Jesse movement is trying to get him as a write-in candidate. And a bunch of states, 39 if I'm not mistaken, you have to get a certain number of signatures, not a lot of these electors, to put him as a approved write-in candidate, which just shows you how corrupt our system. Write-in candidate should just mean anybody should be able to just write a name in. And if enough people write that name in, that person becomes president, right? No. Another way to block it because they don't want a populist. They don't want somebody that the people want getting in power. They want to handpick their puppets for the oligarchs. So, um, the Green Party doing this now, and it's hard, like the Green Party isn't even on every state's ballot to my understanding. So the Green Party putting that on the ballot, which means Jesse Ventura could theoretically win the four electoral votes, I believe it is, in Alaska. That's big. Alaska's typically a red state. I'm almost certain they voted for Trump in the last election. But wouldn't you rather vote, especially if you lived in a red state where you're like, I live in a red state, and you're not a, a diehard Trumper or you voted for him the first time and you're really disappointed in him and you're just like, I don't, and if you just don't, there's no way you want to vote for Biden or Trump. Vote for Jesse Ventura because this is interesting what they did. Um, in defiance of the National Green Party, the Green Party of Alaska has drafted Jesse Ventura and Cynthia McKinney as their presidential and vice presidential nominees, granting them ballot access in the state. That's what's so critical. Because if you write somebody in, in a state where that name is not approved, it doesn't even count. Some states just allow you to write in. Some states don't even allow write-in votes, which tells you uh, everything you need to know. A final poll was held by the party to choose what candidate would receive their presidential nomination, and Jesse Bratura won 50% of the vote. Robert Shields, chair of the Green Party of Alaska, had this to say regarding the decision. Ventura was an easy choice for independent Alaskans, and he's clearly the most competent candidate drafting a proven way to make radical changes in the system. Dra drawing parallels to the draft Eisenhower movement of 1952, the Green Party of Alaska outlined the following in their official statement. Only once before in the U.S. history has an ordinary citizen been lifted up by the people and elevated to the office of the President of the United States? Over the next decade, the United States of America can emerge as leaders of the fossil-free world and end poverty globally, which America could do. If we had a real progressive in the White House and, and the whole country got behind it, we could do this. To get us there, we need strong leadership on all levels, and only a trained soldier working side by side with a seasoned advocate can hope to lead the campaign of waging peace in a world of war. Richard Idris, who we've had on the show twice from the Draft Jesse campaign, 
said this, the people for Jesse largely moved on from the Green Party after their national convention to work toward an independent write-in campaign for Governor Ventura. But we had always recognized an internal schism within the Green Party's as possible outcome for their primary. Tension around presidential nominee selection has led to these sorts of issues within both Green and Libertarian parties before. Ventura receiving the state party's nomination thanks to an efforts of wholly separate movement further proves the case of his wide appeal. We've talked about it numerous times on the show. We've talked to Richard Idris, who was just quoted in this article. We've talked about the fact that Jesse Ventura is a Navy SEAL. Jesse Ventura understands local politics because he was a mayor and governor of Minnesota. I think he was the mayor of St. Paul and then governor of Minnesota. Minnesota's not a small state. It ain't Rhode Island. It's a big state. And he was an independent. It was huge what he did. And then he even said at an interview recently that, you know, he, after he got out of office, he was offered a job at MSNBC. Everybody wanted a piece of him. And when they found out what he was going to talk about, ending the wars and all this other stuff, they were like, nope, that's why he's on RT. Right. So Ventura, we've talked about this. He resonates with lefties like me, socialist, anti-war. I'm an anti-war, pro-labor socialist. That's what I would call myself. But he resonates with like libertarians. He resonates with the center-right people. He, and he resonates with labor. You know, who's going to call him some hippie Marxist socialist beatnik? He was a Navy SEAL. He knows what war looks like. He knows how awful it is. And who's going to tell, who's going to, who, who on Fox News is going to, is going to badmouth him? He would pull a lot of red state voters. He would. Not to mention all, because if it, with the Green Party, all of the environmentalists. And he can bridge that divide between the working class whites and the like environmentalists on the left. You know, the, the, the corporate media has done a fantastic job, especially Fox News, but MSNBC has, and CNN have done a fine job of making this like environmentalism or the Green New Deal is bad for business, right? That's what they always say. We need to, de it's bad for business. He could bridge that gap and show actually a Green New Deal gives us more jobs. He could bridge that gap. He could unite people in very unique ways. And, this, and the state of Alaska's Green Party recognized this. So... Um, going back to what Richard Idris said in this article, um, the movement for a people's party, unity 2020 and the green party have all now actively sought to collaborate with and or draft the governor during this election cycle groups who draw support from Americans across vastly different parts of ideological spectrum. That's, he just said what I just said, all these different groups, wide spectrum, but we're all sort of in agreement that. We got to end these wars. There's a lot of conservatives that, I mean, like when I'm on crosstalk with Peter Lavelle, he's a big conservative and he's very anti-war. That's why he has me on his show. Um, Idris also added, we are eager to collaborate with the Green Party of Alaska moving forward during this election cycle while we continue our own push to secure write-in or other forms of ballot access for a Ventura campaign. There should be no more shaming voters into settling for corrupt and ethically compromised lesser evils. Amen, Richard. The people deserve a candidate worth voting for this November, and we're striving to make that a reality in as many states as possible. That's impressive. That's impressive. So if you live in the state of Alaska, vote for Jesse Ventura. Vote for Jesse Ventura. And you know what? If you are in, in charge of the Libertarian or Green Party or any independent party that ha already has ballot access, get him on your ballot. What if he won all these states? Oh, he's a, he won as a Libertarian in this state and a Green in that state and a People's Party and whatever. It was a write-in in this state. You just need the electoral votes. It doesn't matter what party. If you're, if you're like, if four different parties put them on ballots, I'm telling you, I know it sounds like a crazy long shot. It's September. The election's in two months. I get it. I get it. It's a long shot. Summer. And I'm not saying electoral politics is going to, we all talk about this electoral politics and save the world, but you want to talk about really shaking up the power structure and really opening up the doorway to real change. What if Jesse Ventura became president?
What if he just won a couple of states? What would that say? I'm just telling you. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, Jesse, uh, people are putting entirely too much on him as if he were a savior, just looking to be let down again. Well, th there's some truth to that. I mean, that's a fair statement. I'm not saying, um, I'm not saying, oh, Jesse's the savior. He'll do everything. But, and there's so many more things that need to happen. A general strike is far more effective. I wish the NBA and all the sports leagues, the WNBA, instead of just not playing games for two or three days, would have just said, we're striking. We're done. We're shutting this down until our billionaire owners, because every big every sports team is owned by billionaires, pressure these local governments to get real defunding the police happening right now. We want these cops charged and sentenced, and we want massive police restructuring, refunding, and overhaul. We want this now. It would start to happen. So yes, I'm not like you know, just like some of the Bernie people like Bernie's going to ride in on a white horse and save us all. No. And neither is Jesse, but it's, it's significant. You want to break the duopoly. You want to shatter the grip that these two utterly corrupt parties have. You jam a guy like Jesse Ventura in there. I don't think Tulsi Gabbard or even Nina Turner for that. She was at the people's convention and I hope she leaves the democratic party. I just don't see them leaving the democratic party. They're still, I'd love it that I just don't think they got the guts to do it. I don't think they, they want to seize the moment in history. They still want to be invited to the cool kids party. So they keep waiting. So in 2016, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. They had their option. 2016 was the year. Cornell West and, and Chris Hedges said this. Bernie Sanders missed his opportunity in 2016. After the Democratic Party screwed him, and Bernie said, I'm running independent. That would have blown everything up. And he might have won as an independent. All the 100 million people that don't vote might have gone, I'm in now. He said, he said, eat it. He said, suck it to the Democratic Party. And Trump's nuts. I don't want any Hillary Trump. Done with it. Boom. Could have happened, but he didn't do it. Hey, everyone. Great ways to support the show are go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you get bonus content for as little as $2 a month or rockfin.com slash Elwood, a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. That's the future. Also, GrahamElwood.com, where all my merchandise is on sale and ships exclusively with the United States Post Office, like my Vigilant T Volume 2, The Dark Knight. We only made 50 of them. They're going fast. Go to GrahamElwood.com to support the show. I'm on Venmo and PayPal, P.O. Box, all of that, GrahamElwood.com.